Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're just going to talk about how to calculate tangential velocity and acceleration for circular motion problems. So let's start out here with a circle. And let's imagine that this is some kind of disc that is rotating, right? Uh, so it's going to have an angular velocity, uh, which is basically the, you know, the rate of change and the angular displacement that we represent by the amount of degrees or radians it's um, rotated through. Uh, what else do we have? Um, if we pick a point on the outside of the disc and follow its arc length, or basically the path that it travels as this thing rotates about the center, we just call that the arc length, or L. And if this thing is um, changing, if its angular velocity is changing, that means that there's some kind of angular acceleration, and we would refer to that as alpha. So those are all standard angular components of uh, basically you no know, angular or circular motion problems. Um, but there's another way that we can talk about angular or circular motion, and that is using the tangential and normal components of the acceleration, or in some cases, the velocity as well. So if you imagine that we're inspecting some point on the outer surface of this disc that's spinning, it's actual instantaneous motion, if we just took a snapshot of it as it's spinning, is going to be tangent to the surface of that disc or tangent to the radius basically drawn to that point out from the center, right, like that, it's going to be at 90 degrees where this is the radius. So basically like it's instantaneous motion is moving in that tangential direction, um, which means it's instantaneous velocity is also in the direction that it's actually moving in at that moment in time. And if the angular acceleration is not equal to zero, that means the disc is basically spinning up faster and faster or slowing down, that type of thing, then that means there's also going to be a tangential acceleration in the same direction as the tangential velocity, just like that. But if we had something with a velocity that's just in a straight line, that would be linear motion, and it would just, as long as there's no other forces acting on it, it would just continue to go in that straight line. But if we're thinking about this point on the disc as it rotates, uh, it's not going to continue in a straight line based on where the vector is in this particular moment in time, because as it rotates, that vector is going to be moving around and basically staying tangent to the curve that it's following. So we need to have an acceleration that's basically going to the right that's always causing us to drift in that circular path, and we refer to that as normal acceleration. And it points towards the center of uh, the circle, or like to the, the origin of the, the curve, basically. So we'll call this the normal acceleration. And sometimes people also refer to this as centripetal acceleration. But this will basically always just be normal to the tangential acceleration and tangential velocity uh, as we go around. It's always pointing inwards, and that's basically what's causing us to move in the circular path, always rotating about that center of the rotation. But let's not focus on the normal acceleration in this video. Let's just focus on the tangential acceleration and the tangential velocity. Um, we'll, we'll cover normal acceleration in the next video. Um, now, to get started with the equations here, if you remember L here, the, the equation for L, or the arc length, or the path traveled, basically, of a point that's rotating about the center of a disk or the center of a circular path, it's simply just L is equal to R theta. We've seen that in previous videos. The expressions for V and AT are also super simple. Uh, we just have V, which is the tangential velocity, is equal to R omega, and the tangential acceleration is just equal to r alpha. So really straightforward equations, and they all indicate because it's just the angular displacement velocity or acceleration multiplied by the radius. That's basically the distance out from the point that we're rotating about. So if we had some other point right here and it's rotating, and you know, it's only halfway out, it's like a r over two distance, then it will follow uh, this yellow line here it will be half as long as the purple line here for the path traveled by that point or the arc length. Um, it's given the same angular velocity, uh, it's going to have one half of the tangential velocity and given the same angular acceleration, it's going to have half of the tangential acceleration. So these are all just proportional to how far away from the point we're moving in this circular path. So if someone has given you some information and they just ask you to calculate the tangential velocity and acceleration, let's say that they say, 
that their radius is equal to 33 centimeters of some disk, so that's equal to 0 0.33 meters. Um, let's say they also give us the angular, uh, the angular velocity at some point of 15 radians per second, and that it's accelerating the angular acceleration at 1.5 radians per second squared. So if someone asked us to calculate the tangential velocity of some point on the outer surface of this disk, um, then we would just have v is equal to r omega, which would be equal to 0 0.33 meters times 15 radians per second, which gives us about 5 meters per second. And if we were looking for the tangential acceleration of that same point somewhere on the outer surface of this disk, it would just be at is equal to r alpha, which is equal to 0 0.33 meters times 1.5 radians per second, which would be about 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So that's how you calculate them, but it is a little bit arbitrary about what these actually are. Um, if you imagine this was a much, the numbers here were much bigger, and this was a car traveling around a circular path, the tangential velocity would basically be what the speedometer of the car is reading. It's how fast it's going around uh, as it travels, you know, kilometers per hour or meters per second. And if that car was accelerating as it was going, you know, its, it's speedometer is increasing, that acceleration would be the tangential acceleration, basically, as it changes its speed as it goes around this path. Or if you imagine this um, as a disc maybe rolling uh, on a flat surface, let's draw on a flat surface here, its, uh, its tangential velocity at all points on the outer part of the wheel or the disc are going to be having the same value, so they'll all be moving at five meters per second, basically tangentially relative to the, the center that they're rotating about. And if it's not slipping, then right here it's interesting because the tangential velocity here would be going like that, which would be V, which would be equal to five meters per second. But this is a relative velocity as seen basically from the center that it's rotating about. And when the wheel is not slipping, it's making static contact. So in this moment, that the wheel passes this point, the surface of the wheel and the surface of the ground are making totally static contact with each other. There's no movement here. Um, and it's actually this that's translating directly to the right at five meters per second relative to this. It's the same thing. So the center of the wheel would actually be moving to the right or translating at V, which is equal to five meters per second. So as this wheel is not slipping and rotating, the whole thing is actually moving to the right at a speed of V, which is in this case, or at this moment in time, would be five meters per second. And if it's accelerating, then same thing. Um, if the angular acceleration alpha is not zero, then we're going to be experiencing a tangential acceleration as well. And that basically means the angular acceleration, this thing is spinning faster and faster, which means this point is going faster and faster around this path, which basically means the whole thing is speeding up in this direction. So we would have the whole thing accelerating to the right at a rate of 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So hopefully that's clear that these values, these tangential quantities, A, T, and V, they're basically referenced, they're like a relative acceleration and velocity compared to the center of rotation. And that's how, without slippage, in the situation where we have a disc or a wheel rotating, uh, or rolling along a surface, is how that can translate to the center, having that exact same acceleration and velocity in the direction that it's rolling, as indicated up here. And so I just want to make one point here, is that there's a few variations of this type of problem. Some is like you have a vehicle traveling in a circular path, and all of these formulas apply. Uh, other times you'll have a disc rolling, like just some arbitrary disc rolling along a flat surface, and other times this might be the wheel of a vehicle, like a bicycle or car, for example. So you can imagine if we have a bicycle just like this, um, you might be given some information like saying the bicycle is moving at 5 meters per second to the right or it's accelerating at 0 0.5 meters per second squared to the right. And then you might be able to, you might be asked to work backwards, like find the angular acceleration or the angular velocity. Um, 
all of these quantities are exactly the same, they'll just try to complicate the problem by like throwing in, oh, you have all these other moving parts and stuff. But just imagine that the bike is not there and just simplify the problem. You don't need to imagine all the other bike components. Just imagine that it is just the disc there um, and uh, try not to get thrown off by, by added information like that. So I hope that clears up some of the differences for you between angular velocity and angular acceleration. Uh, with tangential velocity and tangential acceleration. And join me in the next video, and we're going to talk about this inward acceleration for circular motion problems that we call normal or centripetal acceleration.